everybody and welcome back to another Starfield video. Today I have one that is really, really weird in the sense that it's a kind of hidden location. It is one of the coolest things I have ever seen in Starfield and I have over 15 days of total playtime and I'm only now just discovering this. This is an amazing discovery and one you absolutely have to see. So with that being said, guys, of course, if you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, all that good jazz, and let's get into it. So you're looking for the Maheo system, and you can find it by going to the top right of the soul system over to the Cheyenne system. When you find the Cheyenne system or where Aquila City is in, if you click on it, there is two systems to choose from, and you're going to want to choose, obviously, the one that isn't Cheyenne. Now, once you're here in the Maheo system, you're going to want to go to the first planet in its orbit, and you're going to notice that there should be no locations on this planet. So, go ahead and fly to that system, and then go ahead and scan it. For some reason, this location only shows up once you scan the planet, and I just can't remember there being any locations that appears after you scan, so that's very, very odd to me or interesting i guess but maybe there is and maybe i'm just wrong now once you land you're going to see you're on an island obviously it's named an island but still and it is beautiful and of course you're going to see this massive place that you can go into and once you enter Oh my god, this place is lit beautifully. The lighting update Starfield has had has obviously done tremendous work to this place. It is a beautiful place that you can now fully explore. So go ahead and look around, and we're going to tour it here a bit. So you'll see there's a pool table in this room, and in the other room there's a nice bar and all that. But we cannot enter because you have to open it and unlock the doors from the other side. Now this place is crawling with Crimson Fleet pirates. So so if you're in the Crimson Fleet, don't worry about it. If you're not in the Crimson Fleet and they're your enemies, you're going to probably just have to take them all out. I mean, there's not really another alternative for you. Now, as you're progressing through, you're going to want to head over here to the kitchen. And when you're in the kitchen and just keep going back as far as you can, and eventually you're going to see a vent in the ceiling. Now, if you take this vent in the ceiling, it is going to get you to places that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to get to. So go through the vent, reach the other side, and when you listen to all this dialogue here, or fight them depending on what your factions are, you will be able to unlock the doors and explore the rest of the mansion. Now, there is so many goodies here to take and loot, including contraband, weapons, all that. But there's so much more to this place that I'll go over later. Because for right now, we're just going to keep going along with the tour. Now, when you reach the same path I have, you will be in one of those rooms that was previously locked. If you go ahead and just head over towards the door, you can use the computer to permanently unlock the door so that any future time you come over to this place, this mansion, you can just walk through that door. So going back the way we came, there is so much more to explore. There is several rooms, kitchens, bars, there's so much so if you just keep exploring into each room you'll even be able to find like keys and stuff like that that you can use to open other rooms and find more and more loot so it is kind of a fun place to explore and obviously here in the background you're going to see me kind of basically doing all of it most of it and this place is amazing there's tons of things to pick lock or digi pick or whatever you want to call it so if you need to try and get that rank up by you know doing them this is a great place to go especially you know every new game plus run if you're still going through that unity you know come here and you can get a bunch of progress done if you need to so keep going into these rooms and exploring and the best part about this mansion is that none of the beds are also quote unquote owned so that means if you want, you could actually technically keep this as your own house. Yeah, you heard me right. This place is not like the NASA launch facility or anything of that sort. So you will not be locked out once you leave, once you fly away. This is available to you now forever once you come here. And like I said, if you're in the Crimson Fleet... You have some buddies or bodyguards or roommates, whatever you want to say. Or if you want, if you're not in the Crimson Fleet and you have to take them out, then we'll, you know, 
you're just gonna have to probably pull their bodies into a closet and never see them again, but you have your very own house without any roommates or guests or anything of the sort. I don't know, the way I like to kind of think about it is, you know, by helping Delgado and all of them and becoming a member of the Crimson Fleet, I should have gotten this mansion myself. So this is my reward in my, my head. But as you can see, there is a indoor swimming pool, some poles that we're not going to go into and talk about. And this is a great mansion house here, a big suite. Of course, the owner sitting on the bed, dead. But, you know, there is a much there is a bunch of lore for you to be able to look at and read and all of that. So this is an amazing, amazing place. And don't forget that you could decorate this place if you drop items that you can obviously pick up from other places and bring over. Drop them, move them around, and you can even decorate this place to your liking. So while you can't do obvious, you know, things like moving stuff outpost-wise, like if this was an outpost, you can still go ahead and move things Drop things like, you know, pencil holders, stuff like that. Stuff that's in your miscellaneous and decorate the place. Now, there is so much to still look at. And over here is the best room, obviously, because this room is going to have an indoor pool. But that's not the only thing. If you come upstairs to the roof, there is even more. But I'm going to hold it for now. I'm not going to show you it only because... We have to look at this room because this room is the best. Now, this room has a bar. It has everything you could want. It has a storage room, a another area we're not going to talk about, but I'll just say they feature poles, and it has a indoor pool. This is like the sweetest room in any Bethesda game I've ever seen, honestly. This is like you're going on a beach resort. This is like your very own Paradiso, your very own vacation spot. It is amazing, and like I said, all of the beds and chairs and everything are not owned, so this is completely open to you. And of course, don't forget to open the door to this room so that every time you come back, you don't have to sit there going through vents and running around other ways. So make sure you open and unlock all the doors. Now, with all that being said, let's head to the roof because this is even part of the magic that this place has. You have your very own kind of party area up on the roof, of course, with some more Crimson Fleet members or bodyguards or, you know, protectors, whatever you want to roleplay that with. Because after all, Starfield is a roleplaying game. And this is such an amazing place. The views are amazing, obviously, because you're also on an island. There's no fauna. There's no animals. Like, I mean, that's what I meant. So you don't have to worry about you know anything kind of distracting you or whatnot you also have a pool that you well you can't swim in because it's a bit drained but there is a pool on the roof bunch of chairs to relax with good nature sounds if you turn off your music and only leave on the sounds of the planet and the wind and all that amazing sounds amazing everything super super neat super cool and this place is actually like the greatest house you can't have <laughs> So, like I said, obviously, this is not a legit house in the sense of you can buy it and it's yours and then you can use, like, the outpost money. No. This is just an instance that, well, you could actually use as your own home. And there's also things like this roof key entrance that will allow you to go through vaults. Now, I didn't have it, so I'm going to go hunt for the room key. And while we're doing that, I'm just going to talk a bit more about how... This is a place that will allow you to also keep it as your home. Now, in the sense of there is a lot of things that you can do here that you probably didn't think about. Now, while we're on the quest hunt real quick to find that key and to find out how to get through that vent area, if you didn't realize some of these places have things like safes, have things like weapon lockers and kind of stuff like that. Now, the best part about that is is that you are able to, in what I believe, I guess, is put an infinite amount of stuff in it. So that is a really amazing feature. So this house basically has everything. I mean, this house has a roof that has a pool, has all of this good stuff in it, has private rooms, as you can see right now, with mirrors where you can self-reflect on things that you've done. I don't know why you'd want to do that. It has an indoor pool it has several bars, places with poles that we're not going to talk about what they're used for. It is an amazing place. Obviously, there was tables for like tabletop games. Sadly, you can't play them, but party areas. 
And I still think the best part of the whole thing is the Crimson Fleet members because I really like the idea that this is kind of my reward for helping Delgado and the Crimson Fleet. And uh, now they're just kind of like my bodyguards who watch the premises. And I am honestly really thinking about using this as my own house, especially with the infinite storage chest that I'm going to show their locations later. Absolutely. And like I said earlier here, as you can see, you can move objects. And of course, that means you can also move the beach balls. In case you were wondering, they don't actually bounce in the water and they just slowly sink. Yeah, it's kind of, I was a little sad with that one. But anyway, we'll just look past that. And not to mention outside the front, there is a little sand path that leads you to your very own private beach. A private little sand bank here for you to enjoy. This place has everything. Even this fountain here in the front, it has a nice entry room. It has infinite storage, as you're going to see here. I'm going to shove a bunch of items into different areas so that you can see. It is just crazy. I mean, I literally don't think there's anything I can say that's bad about this place. And with the new Starfield lighting upgrades that have happened recently, this place looks amazing. Better than ever, and all of this is also captured on a Xbox Series X. So what I'm basically trying to say is this is not a mod. There was no mods. None of this. This is all organic footage right here from like the organic Starfield. So don't worry about trying to find the mod for the place. Don't worry about trying to find mod for lighting to make it look as good. This is literally how it looks. It looks amazing. I mean, how can you go wrong with a pool a pool that you can actually swim in, another pool on the, on the roof with partying at things, so many lounge chairs to sit, so many things to see and do, so many places and rooms for you to take, places that you can sleep and actually make your own. I mean, there's literally nothing you can't do at this place. This island is one of the best player homes that isn't even a player home. And for some reason, Starfield does not show you this location. Or at least in my 15 days of total playtime, I have never seen this location brought up. Unless you scan the planet. And it's kind of covered because obviously when you're going to those two systems, you're going to the Cheyenne system. So with all that being said, that's pretty much it. I... Just can't believe this area. It is so cool. It is a amazing player home that isn't even supposed to be a player home, but you can obviously make it a player home. Redecorate the place by picking up and putting down items and all that. It is phenomenal. I mean, literally, I can't believe this area isn't shown. I'm not even sure if it's supposed to show up when you scan or if that's a glitch or bug or maybe something that got bugged and now is in since one of these past few small updates, a hidden feature, because I'm not sure. And I just I don't believe this location is really known at all. So with all of that being said, if you're looking for a perfect house to do a bunch of different things from chilling in the pool going to the bar, getting some drinks, you know, and whatnot, maybe playing some table games with your uh, partners, you know, Andresia or whatnot, or maybe you're just going to live like a king and sleep on the sweet bed, or check out the amazing view that you can find from the roof or the beaches of this island. You don't, you know, don't, don't gotta be picky. You can pick and choose which one you want or something else we're not going to get into in a Starfield video. So let's just not really think about this one anymore but this house has everything you could want so with that being said party on the rooftops of course and if you guys like this video please like subscribe comment share all that good jazz we're gonna go crazy once creations comes out and uh yeah so with all that being said i don't really got much left to say i hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and as always i will see you in the starfield <laughs>